Welcome back, everybody. Well, the Rolling Stones are known by many for, of course, shaping rock and roll. The band spent 18 weeks at number one on the Billboard chart. And the group built a following that some fans would argue is second to none. News Nation reporter Larry Potash introduces us to a man who spent part of his life following the band. For decades, musicians, drug dealers, and groupies surrounded the Rolling Stones. Bill German is none of those, and yet somehow spent much of his life hanging out with the band. His view, the front row, backstage, and in their homes. So how does an innocent straight-A student from Brooklyn in an Orthodox Jewish religious school chase a rock band around the world? It starts when he's 10 years old. The only bands I knew were the ones that had Saturday morning TV shows. Otherwise, I never heard of you. So, you know, we're talking about the Beatles, who I still love, the Monkees, who I guess I still love, uh, and the Jackson Five, who I guess I still love, actually. But those were the three bands that I knew because they all had, like, cartoons or, you know, TV shows. And then the Stones enter my life, and it's like, oh, my God, these guys can beat up the Monkees, you know? They just seem so tough. In 1978, at the age of 16, he starts a newsletter out of his bedroom, a fan magazine, or fanzine, called Beggar's Banquet, a banquet of Stone's information even a beggar could afford. After a year, he sets out on a mission to show his fanzine to the band and maybe get an interview. He stakes out a party in Manhattan. So I hand him the newsletter my latest issue almost like a process server and they get into this limo and the window of the limousine is open for some reason and i peek in and keith is like elbowing ron wood like what the hell is that man and ron wood is like oh he just gave that to me it's his magazine and um and that starts everything and then like they know that i exist and little does he know a photo of that very moment exists he finds it decades later during research for his book on the stones and i'm like oh my god that's me in the background i have to use this for the cover of my book and the crazy part is i knew all along that i'd be calling my book under their thumb and you have keith sticking out his thumb for whatever reason he's not hitchhiking i don't know why he's got his thumb out so it just worked out perfectly under, my thumb. under their thumb you know by the title from the very start something about his rock and roll fantasy isn't as glorious as it appears from the front row. Yes, in the 1970s, you could bump into the Rolling Stones walking down the street in New York City. For Bill German, he appreciates their sense of rebellion. It gives him identity and self-esteem. Why do you think they accepted you? I think they realized I didn't want anything from them. I didn't want money. I didn't want their drugs. If I was going to hang out at their houses, I wasn't going to steal their silverware. You know, they just knew that I was just an innocent kid that was in it for the music and for the excitement of being around the Rolling Stones. Ron Wood is always there for the young Bill German. Keith Richards is also very gracious with his time and insight. In time, Bill becomes so close to the band, he goes from wanting to know everything to knowing too much. Describe the challenge of being close to the Stones and reporting on them. I was able to see their flaws, and it actually makes me kind of respect their art even more when I see them as flawed characters. A band with beautiful chemistry, sometimes fueled by drinking and drugs. Bill writes that in 1982, pounds of cocaine are smuggled through Europe on the Stones jet in the heads of G.I. Joe dolls. Bill never gets caught up in any of that, but from his new perspective of his favorite rock band, he begins to understand. How could it not screw up your perspective when you're on stage and there's 55,000, 60,000 people chanting your name? And so what Keith always used to tell me is the times when he did the most drugs was when they were not on tour. Because when you're on tour, you already have like an adrenaline rush going. It's when you're home in your slippers and pajamas, wondering like, where did all that go? In 1995, during the Voodoo Lounge tour, the Stones perform a secret show at the Paradiso Club in Amsterdam. Bill is sworn to secrecy. Then he stops by a historic home in Amsterdam, the Anne Frank House. 
the home where a little girl writes her diary while hiding from the Nazis. And then you start to realize, like, the meaning of a secret and the secret that got, you know, kept by that family and what that meant and the impact of it just, like, hit me. It was the same day I was going to see the Stones and their supposed secret show. But it gave me a perspective. At that point, I'm in my 30s, and I'm like, oh, no, this is what a secret really means, you know, life and death kind of secrets. The Stones, you know, if that secret gets out, people will live. Bill German comes to realize some advice from his high school history teacher turns out to be true. So let me tell you something, Billy. And I'm like, what is this old coot going to tell me? He's like 50 years old, this old guy. And he says, the problem with mixing hobby and profession is that, yes, it'll make your job feel like fun. But believe me, in time, your fun will feel like work. And he was sort of right. After being pushed, pulled, bullied, and conned by PR people, managers, promoters, and moody rock stars, a teen's rock and roll fantasy is over, even as 70-year-old rock stars keep playing. Larry Potash, News Nation, Chicago. Hmm. What an interesting yarn. Yeah. And I, I'm sure it'll be a good book, too. Trip down memory lane. Yeah, great pictures. He even has the impersonations down, too. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Life on the road with a, a, a band of that status. <laughs> band of stories must be good for yeah. so many reasons. Wow.